Okay, we got to start reviewing because we have a unit test uh, this Friday. So we're going to review everything we saw in the unit, starting from question 92 to 99. The second review, questions 100 to 107, I'm going to do tomorrow. So for today, it's only 92 to 99. Starting on 92, we're looking at congruent statements, right? Complete each congruent statement by naming the corresponding angle or side. When it comes to sides, we use two letters. When it comes to angle, they use one letter or three letters. Right, we talked about that before. So looking at here, question 92, I'm using a, le a side. because I'm using the letters VU, two, le two letters. Now using looking at the first statement, V is the third letter and U is the first letter. So I'm going to use the first letter and the third letter. The order doesn't matter. So looking at the other side, I'm going to use U and B. Right, the first letter and the third letter. The same same thing, but again, order doesn't matter. So I can call this VU. I can complete it as it's congruent to UB, or I could call it BU. So when it comes to sides, I'm gonna you just use the first letter and the third letter, but the order doesn't matter. Either of those answers are correct. For angles, remember you gotta use one letter or three letters. Now, question 93. Now, this is what gave you guys a little bit of hard time. Now, two rules that we got to see here. I combine two small segments, and that makes a big segment. Right? I'm just going to add the two small segments and make the big segment. Another case that might happen is that my two, se my two small segments make a big segment, but the two small segments overlap. Notice how there's a part that it's overlapping. I don't. If I just add the two small segments, I'm counting the small part twice, but I only want it to count once. So in that case, when they do overlap, I have to subtract the overlap. That's actually what's going to happen in question 93. Let's take a look. My first segment and the other segment. Actually, let me do a red. One small segment and another small segment. I'm gonna add those two. So I'm gonna go 29 plus X plus X plus 32. Notice I added the two segments, right? But they overlap. So I have to subtract. And they, the, the overlap, I'm gonna put it inside parentheses, the overlap is 11. Now, this is going to equal to the whole thing, which is x plus 39. When they overlap, you have to subtract the overlap once. Because if you just add the segments, you're counting the overlap twice. All right, first thing I'm going to do after this is let me get rid of parentheses. So I'm going to write 29 plus x plus x plus 32 minus 11 is equal to x plus 39. Let me separate my sides to the equal side. On the left side, let me combine my like terms. I see 1x plus 1x, so I'm just going to call that 2x. And then numbers-wise, I see 29 plus 32 minus 11. I'm just going to call that 50 positive 50. Again, that 50 came from 29 plus 32 minus 11. On the right side of my equal sign, I just see x plus 39. Nothing can be combined. I still want to combine like terms. I'm going to move the x's together. I usually move the smallest x because I want to avoid negatives if possible. So the, pot, the 1x, I'm going to cancel it out but I'm going to move it to this other side as a minus x. Notice I switched the sign. And then the plus 50, let me move it to the other side as a minus 50. So I cancel it out, but I moved it, and don't forget to switch the signs. Notice I have the x's on one side and the numbers on the other. So on the left side, 2x minus 1x, that is 1x. Now 39 minus 50, 
that gives me a negative 11. If my instructions were to solve for x, I just type in negative, negative 11 and I'm done. If the instructions were to solve for x. But I go back, I go back on the instructions and it says for me to find qs. So I need to know what's the distance between q and s. All right, what information from these three segments, the one that will give me qs is this one. So to begin with, let me write x plus 32 because that's qs. Then I know the value of x is negative 11. So let me replace it. Negative 11 plus 32. And I just get 21. So solve for x and then plug it back in. Go back to the instructions. Again, if the instructions were solve for x, x equals negative 11, I'm done. But no, it says find the distance between q and s. All right, let's take a look at question 94 now. We have to remember how to read a protractor. What's the angle of this it is shown? Now, there's numbers on the outside, numbers on the inside. Looking at the first line, the number on the outside is 30. And the number on the inside is 150. Now looking on the other line, the number on the outside is 65. The number on the inside is 115. Now for me to find out what's the angle, I'm gonna subtract my numbers. Either I choose the outside numbers, right, starting from the big one, 65 minus 30, so I could say 65 minus 30. Or if I don't want to use the outside numbers, I use the inside numbers. Starting from the bigger number, 150 minus 115. Either use the outside numbers or use the inside numbers. My, your result in this case should be 35. It's your choice. You want to use the outside numbers or you want to use the inside numbers. Just don't use one of each. Now, looking at question number 95, classify each angle as acute, obtuse, right, or straight. I remembered a right angle is an L shape. A straight angle is straight. An acute is less than 90. So start with an L shape, just close it up. So less than 90. I know twos is more than 90, but less than 180. So starting with the L shape, just open it up. Now, the picture that we see here, this happens to be obtuse. Another thing that we learned at the beginning of this unit was how to name the vertex and the sides of each angle. The vertex is basically the corner, the point R. All right, that's the vertex. Remember, I even mentioned vertex, the letter V looks like a corner. So it's the point at the corner. Now the sides are two rays that start at the vertex. So one of them will be RQ. Right, start from R, go through Q. And the other one is gonna be RS. It doesn't matter which one you label first. So if you say, well, what if I want to say the vertex is R and the sides I want to say RS and RQ? Yeah, that's the same thing, right? Which one from the two sides, which one do you label first? It doesn't matter. Now, a wrong answer, let me just, let me specify wrong answer. One of you will say, well, what if I say R is the vertex and then I say RS and QR? Now that one is wrong. That one, what I will say is you start at Q and go through R. So in our picture, you start at Q and go through R, right? That one will be wrong. So let me raise that. That one is wrong. 
you always start from the vertex. All right, let's take a look at question number 97. Name each angle in four ways. All right, one way I could call this angle five. All right, I see the number there, so it's angle five. I can also call it angle R. I could just use the vertex if I wish. Now using three letters, I can also label it three ways. I mean, two different ways. I'm gonna use the three letters, but I'm gonna leave R because R is the vertex. I'm gonna leave it in the center. So I can say this is angle SRQ, or I could call this angle QRS, right? I left the vertex in the center. Now here it says, choose the wrong name for this angle. So from my choices, the choices given here, one of them is not from the four possible ways. In this case is D, that's wrong. The other three cases are correct. Here, remember, looking at the instructions, it says choose the wrong name for this angle. All right, now let's take a look at question number 98. We're going to solve for this measurement. Now, the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to add two small angles. So I see there's a small angle here, KLD. Notice I left L in the center. KLD or DLK. That's 110. And then there's another small angle, this one, DLM or MLD, right? Leave L in the center. So let me add those two measurements. Sometimes by coincidence, right now I have all numbers, but sometimes some of them might be letters. So let me just go 110 plus 46. Like I said, there might be some letters included sometimes. And this is going to equal to, now let me erase this. Now I know this is equal to this num this big one right here, MLK. Now, unfortunately, I don't know what MLK is. <laughs> it's just MLK. So I'm going to say, all right, let me let this equal to x. I learned back in algebra that when I don't know the value of something, I replace it with the letter. In this case, x. So 110 plus 46, I know that's 156. Remember how here it says find MLK, and I called it x? So there, 156. All right, let's take a look at question number 99. When I add the two small angles, x minus 6 plus 104, that just gives me this angle plus this angle. I don't know how big the big angle is. However, if I was to add this to 225, it gives me a whole circle. I know it kind of looks a little oval in my case, but a whole circle is 360. All right, let me combine my like terms on the left. When it comes to letters, I just have X. When it comes to numbers, negative six plus 104 plus 225, it gives me 323, and all this is equal to 360. All I did is combine my like terms. Now, I want to have the x by itself, so this 323, let me move it as a minus 323, so I get that x is equal to 37. Right, 360 minus 20, 323 is 37. Go back to the instructions. Find the value of x. All right. 37. Let me zoom out so you guys can see what we did today. 